I'm so interested to have you explain to me the current state of how a piece of metal turns into a battery uh, as a use case. So maybe walk us through, we all hear, oh, you know, the, the supply chains for metals are complicated and carbon intensive and this, that, and the other. And I think, you know, fraught politically, uh, you know, from a geopolitics perspective, I think we, 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 we all inherently or intuitively know that, but um, walk us through the specifics of that. Yeah, absolutely. And it is complicated and it is uh, very carbon intensive. And uh, part of the reason for that is because certain pieces of the supply chain have only been built up in uh, countries mostly in Asia uh, because of environmental regulations or otherwise, or because it was too expensive to do it here in the Western world. So if we think about nickel as an example, right, we could mine you know, a molecule of nickel uh, up in northern Canada, for example, close to the Arctic. And from there, it has to be shipped down to uh, Sudbury, generally, where it would be put through a smelter. So the smelter basically takes a nickel concentrate, which is maybe a one to two percent grade nickel. Uh, think of it like it's almost like dirt with two percent nickel in it. It would then go into a smelter or pyrometallurgy where they use very high temperatures and pressures to pull out this intermediate grade nickel, uh, which is nickel mat typically. The nickel mat in Sudbury, Canada would then have to be shipped over into Europe to be uh, sort of the final finishing stages to bring it up to uh, a class one nickel where it's 99.99% nickel. So then it's actually like the nickel that you think of that you could see traded on say the London Metal Exchange. From there, it then has to be shipped to uh, be produced into a cathode active material, which could be in South Korea or somewhere else in, in Asia. It then would have to be shipped to be put in a cathode, then would have to be shipped to be put in a battery, and then it's shipped back to the States, right? So it's made all of these trips around the world, you know, all, like literally halfway around the world to be processed into whatever we need it to be, where then we finally receive it as the module or the pack where some U.S. manufacturers will actually do that final assembly to put it into a car. And so, again, one of the main reasons why this model still exists today is because uh, the Western world, and I think of you know North America and the EU when I say that, is we've never invested in the infrastructure to chemically refine these materials into the the you know, the high grade metal or the cam material or the cathode that we need to put into manufacturing itself. And so that's what we're tr now trying to pull back is so that we do not have to ship that, you know, beautiful nickel that we mined in Canada, or, you know, we have one nickel operating mine here in the States, all face the same problem. And it's not just nickel, it's, it's copper, it's cobalt, it's the rare earth metals, all of these critical minerals that are the true building blocks for the clean energy economy all face the same issue that they have to be transported around several times before they're they're valuable in you know going back into the manufacturing stream. And is is part of that because earlier on in the um, refinement process, there there were there there are I guess still buyers of these metals for other totally un, unrelated use cases. Um, you know, nickel is used in a number of applications beyond just lithium ion batteries, obviously. Um, and so were these supply chains really actually truly optimized for those use cases? And then now the kind of hyper refinement that's required to actually work in a battery is, has been sort of bolted on top. I, I, am I correct in understanding that? So and yeah, as you said, nickel in particular is used in a number of different applications in, in the clean energy space alone. I think batteries, right, top of mind for a lot of folks in the space. But yes, and, and they were in the nickel supply chain was built out the way it was because the, the U.S., the EU, nobody wanted that dirty refinement in their backyard. Right. And so we did what we always do and we pushed it, you know, out of sight, out of mind and have been operating that way because these materials weren't. Uh, critical as they're now on this list from the U.S. and the EU from a demand perspective, but also from a national security perspective, because we made the same mistake we have in the past where we push, you know, most of the things that we don't want to do from an environmental perspective or cost perspective uh, over to Asia where it was cheaper and, and they have like lower standards for their environmental regulations. 